Hello guys, today I will be going over Operation Overloading. Um, if you remember from my, one of my previous videos, operations were basically the operations we can perform mathematically in Python. For example, the plus sign, or the minus sign, or multiplication, exponential, division, for example, 3 plus 4. Let's just print that out. and the operation of addition works and we get seven. Or one thing that we should know is that operations normally work for single numbers. And if you've done any advanced mathematics, such as vector calculus, you should know that in most mathematical equations, especially in the real world applications, we're not always gonna be just working with single numbers. So for example, let's say if we wanted to add up a couple of coordinates, three comma two plus four comma three. Now, from what we know so far, this should work. They're both integers, but they're a set of in integers. So let's see what happens when we try to add them up. Uh, no, oh yeah, I need to print it. Keep forgetting that. Okay, so by adding them, it is adding them together into one list, but it is not adding the numbers. For example, it does not see these as coordinates. It sees these as lists. So instead of adding three to four and two to three, Instead of giving us 7, 5, we're getting just the addition of the list. So basically our operation, the plus sign, has a limit. It can only take coordinates as lists and does not have the ability to add the coordinate functions. So this is where operation overloading comes in. Alright, so here's a quick example. Um, one way to get Python to take our coordinates as a coordinate and not as a list is to create a class that does exactly just that. So here is a class that I found called point. It has a constructor. It takes itself as well as two variables x and a y. This will be the x value and the y value for our coordinate. And the self.x is assigned x, self.y is assigned y. Now let's try to run this. So let's create a point. And let's print this out. And let's see. This should give us 2, comma 3 if it works, which it probably won't. Well, it won't, but let's see. And nope, gives us an error. Well, it gives us a pointer error. Um, pointers are something that I'll cover later in the C or C++ tutorial, but anyways, just know that this is an error. So one of the reasons we're having this error is that the Python print function does not, just like the plus, just like the plus operation, the print function does not know how to print coordinates. So we will have to change that. One way we can do that is by using the built-in function string. And here I have an example right here. So let's just uh, come out of our function namespace. All right, it is a built-in function string, takes in self. Now what this does is it re the string function is very closely related to the print function as well as the format function. And by manipulating the string function's functionality, we can manipulate what we get from our print function. If you want to read more about this, here's the link to the python.org document. Anyways, what this string does is that I've created a method here that returns the x and y dot formatted as self x and y. So basically, it takes the x and y we assign in the constructor, and it allows the print function to display it as a x being printed and a y being printed with a comma. So now when we run this, uh, let me just uh, clear this up here, I mean down there, now we get 2 comma 3. This is important because before we can get to adding our coordinates, we first need Python to be able to print out our coordinates as well as to recognize our coordinates as a functioning, as a data type that we can work with. So now that the print function can print our coordinates in a form of a string, let's move on to overloading our, additional, our addition sign operation. All right, uh, before we begin modifying our addition operation, we need to be aware of a few built-in functions. Um, here's a list of the built-in functions for all of the operators in Python. So we have a built-in function for addition, which is double underscore add double underscore. We have one for subtraction, multiplication, for exponentials, for division, floor division, modulus, left shift, right shift, and or XOR and invert, which is which should be familiar to you if you are familiar with binary. Um, less than, less than or equal, equal to, not equal to, greater than and greater than equal, which are comparisons. Now, because we're changing the addition operation, 
let's go and add in the modification for addition. Um, not that far. Uh, let me just save that. Okay, so here we have taken the ad addition built in function that controls the addition operation. Now, one thing that is important to know that when we are overloading an operator, we're not removing any of the functionality that's built into it by Python, by the Python developers. When we add in additional code like I have in lines 10 to 12, this isn't, this should not conflict with any of the code that's pre-built. We can only add code that adds functionality. It should not remove anything that's already there. In this case, we have the add function. I've given it a self and an other as variable. And this time I've added some functionality in lines 10 and 11 that allow us to add coordinates. So self, and other would be two sets of coordinates. And we have an x value here that takes the x of self, adds it to the x of other, and a y value that takes the x of the y of self, adds it to the y of other. And then it returns the addition when we call it point xy. Now, one thing that's interesting that I've noticed is that when we use the add function, it doesn't have to be used with the point class. Simply by creating a function anywhere in Python that modifies the add operator's behavior, I can call this new functionality with add with almost any function that has an x and a y. But to demonstrate this, I'm, not, I'm just going to use the point class. So I've created two points, p1, which is the original point that I created, and then p2, which is our new point with the value 4 and 6 for the x and y. Now here I'm using the modified add operator. It's just the same as a normal addition operator. I just used a plus, but this time you're adding two coordinates. So because it now has functionality that helps it add coordinates, the moment a coordinate is plugged in, the P1 and the P2, it will now know what to do with it. So when I print this out, it gives us 6 and 9, which is the correct addition. 2 plus 4 is 6 for the X, 3 plus, 7, uh, 3 plus 6 is Y for the 9. Now in addition to being able to add coordinates, it still has its original functionality. So if I use print 3 plus, 4, 3 plus 5, it gives us our added coordinates, but it also gives us 8. So it still has its original functionality to add single numbers, but now it can also add coordinates. Basically, we've given it the ability to identify a coordinate and add them, as well as retain its original functionality. So that's one way we can use operation overloading to modify pre-existing operations. Um, I do have another example. This time we're using a comparison operator, and it's the less than operator the uh, less than. So let me just uh, copy this. Alright, so our string is the same because we are still working with coordinates. However, instead of using the add operation function, we're using the less than, the LT. And this LT actually takes the absolute value, well not the absolute value, but it takes the x and the y and it raises it to the power of 2. This is to allow it to work with any positive or negative number. And then in the return, we will check if the first, if the coordinate in our self position is less than the coordinate of the other. And when it says return the comparison between them, it's going to return true or false. So if the self coordinates is less than the other coordinates, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So let's test this out. Here to test it out, we have point 1, comma 1, which is our self. Then we have point negative 2, negative 3, which is our other. And then we have a less than sign, which is linked to the return function. Now, the way this works is self.mag. We'll take the self.x, raise it to the power of 2. So for the first one, two, 1 raised to the power of 2 is still 1. Same for the self.y. Again, the 1 raised to the 2 is still 1. But for the other, our negative 2 raised to 2 is positive 4, and our negative 3 raised to the power of 2 is positive 9. So 1, 1 being less than 4, 9 should return true. So let me clear the console right now, and let's test it out. And it is, it's true. Let's try a different example. Alright, our self is still the same, 1, 1. Our point, however, are decimals. So 0.5 raised to the power of 2 should be 0.25 and negative 0.2 raised to the power of 2 should be 
a smaller but a positive number. So our other coordinates has less value than our self coordinates. Both of these values are going to be less than 1 versus 1 and 1, so they should return false since it's not less than. And it does. And I think at this point you kind of got a gist of it. Um, I have one last example. The previous two examples I got from Program Wiz, I'm going to link them in the description below. For this last example, I was I created by just testing it out myself. And this is by using the AND comparison. Not ADD, but AND. So if you're using binary and you want to compare two positive values to see if they're true or not, you would use AND, A-N-D, instead of ADD for addition. Okay, so in this case, I've created an if and else statement. Um, it's going to take a coordinate for self and a coordinate for other, just like before. However, this time it's going to check this coordinate for the self.x, so the one position here. And if it's equal to the one position for the other, it's going to return true. And it also has to be the same for the y's. The y's have to be the same. So if I print this, oh, let me just clear it real quick. Since I have point 0.1, 2 being compared to point 0.1, 2, both these statements are true. And if you know how AND works instead of OR, if true and true is avail is given as a statement, then the result should be true when you're using an AND. If it's an OR statement, if it's true or true or false, it's going to be false. It'll only be true if it's true and true. And XOR is the inverse of that, and then inverse would be the opposite of AND. I think. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've worked with AND's and ORs. I might be wrong. Um, just don't go too hard on me on the comments for that. But anyways, I ran the code. It works. It, return, it returns true because both values are equal to one another. Now, the AND statement should not do this. It should not return true if both values are equal. It should only return true if both values are true or if both values are false. So this isn't a functionality of the AND function built in. This is something I've added. So let's change this. So now we have 1, 3 versus 1, 2. And now it should give us false because they're not equal to each other. Now, this might be a little bit confusing to some of you guys, mostly because my explanation is kind of horrible, but just know that this is not what the AND function is supposed to be able to do. This is just something I've modified. And this is what you can do with operation overloading. You can modify an existing operation to do something that it's not normally supposed to be able to. So one thing that can be done is if you want to use the addition operation and use it to multiply, ah, if you want to use it to perform multiplication, you could you could do that with operation overloading. So that's an example of what you can do as well. Anyway, once again, here's a list of all all the operations pre-built into Python. If you want a little bit more information on them, you can test out what I've done, or you can go onto python.org and try to read up on more of these operations. Anyways, this is an, this is it for operation overloading. Next time I will go over a little bit of the data structures in Python as well as the for loops, if statements, while loops, and basically I'll, I'll go over some of the looping mechanics we can use with coding. Anyways, hope you, I hope you guys have a good one.